All right, let's take a look at a uh, non-precision approach. In this case, we're just going to look at a GPS approach, GPS Runway 1 to Republic. Here we are. Um, act I've activated the approach. We're on our way to our initial approach fix uh, of NICAD. We can see we're just in level flight here at 2,000 feet. Uh, I have my barrel minimum set for the approach, uh, and that's right off of the approach plate. I'm currently, my CDI is currently in GPS mode. Uh, I have the autopilot set in this instance to uh, GPS mode. You see that we're arriving at the waypoint NICAD on the overlay map. We see a standard rate turn presented in front of us. Uh, so that should be the track we'll follow along the ground. The magenta line here for the current leg should switch uh, from this line here to the next line from the NICAD to the next uh, approach point, next fix. As we start to navigate, and there we go. So now we're on NICAD to Bland. Standard right presentation here, uh, trend vector. We have completed our pre-landing check. Uh, we are at the correct altitude. We have our barrel minimum set. We can navigate once again to the uh, active flight plan page, the flight plan chapter. We see all of the fixes associated with that approach. We see that we have our barrel minimum set. We see the active leg info. And we can navigate uh, with the little cursor here to the approach plate itself. In this case the GPS 1 can range in or out more or less detail. We push the cursor in and that presents essentially these two scrolling uh, vertical and horizontal scrolling bars. We can navigate uh, throughout the map just by uh, moving those uh, moving the cursor left, right, outer ring, inner ring to navigate around. If we want to look just at the uh, profile view and see the minimums, if we wanted to see the uh, plan view. And in the aircraft uh, with the jet view, we should have geo-referencing. So this little uh, airplane should be available so that if you were looking at this chart, you'd see the aircraft, in this case, right here. We don't have that in, in the dem demo mode, so uh, I can't show that to you. But we'll continue to range in so we have an idea. Okay, I should expect the next thing to be a right-hand turn from Bland to Deuce, our final approach fix. Uh, so after Bland, I can descend down to 1,600 feet. So what will I do uh, as I approach Bland? And we're going to see a right-hand turn coming up here in just another second. Here comes our right hand turn. We've passed our uh, waypoint and we're on our way from Bland. Comes up in 0.7 seconds, 0.6, desired track, actual track as we make that right hand turn. Once the next leg becomes active, and I know that I have overflown uh, Bland, there we go. We're on our way to Deuce. I can select altitude. I'm going to dial my altitude down to the next assigned altitude, 1600 feet in this case. I'll go ahead and clear off of this page. Again, anytime I push and hold clear, just like in the Garmin 430, we can navigate to the uh, nav map 1. This is our default position uh, for returning back to our home base, basically. Here we are at 1600 feet. Uh, on, continuing on the approach, pre-landing checklist is complete. Uh, all the instrumentation is set up for this approach. I could pre-select if I've calculated my VDP. I could prepare to calculate my vertical speed and I know that for my non-precision approach I want a we'll say six to eight hundred foot per minute descent rate. So I could pre-bug that there so that I know in order to reach the runway uh, with a visual reference in sight in the appropriate amount of time, if I can give myself that uh, descent rate, uh, I will uh, be able to see uh, with enough time to make a, a normal approach to landing.
Yeah, one thing we want to talk about here is this is a traditional non-precision GPS approach, but it has so it's lateral navigation LNAV plus V. The Garmin fourth, uh, the Garmin G500 is going to give us a vertical glide slope, but it's not a true glide slope. It's not a precision approach. It's not like a localizer with precision vertical guidance and LPV. Uh, it is a false representation. It's basically an electronically produced uh, glide slope based on distance uh, and altitude. Uh, but it will be presented very similarly here with this uh, glide slope information. So as we approach it, just like we would on an ILS, as we come in from underneath the glide slope, uh, it's going to, we're going to intercept it. Once we have intercepted it, we would begin a descent down to the final approach uh, altitude or the minimum descent altitude as appropriate. So here we are, we're approaching Deuce. We can see we got 0.4 nautical miles. Once we pass Deuce, our final approach fix, we would want to obviously commence a descent down to the appropriate altitude. And we'll try to take this slow, see if we can keep that glide slope in there. Uh, as well as we would want to reselect altitude. We can select heading to sync it to our current heading, reselect altitude, pre select the missed approach altitude. So it's available to us when needed. And we're going to keep descending down to the minimum descent altitude for this approach. And we have the same presentational information right in front of us. We see the next waypoint is runway 1. We see that the distance is 3.2 nautical miles. Our desired track is 0, 1, 3 degrees. We're actually tracking along the ground. If we were able to maintain a true glide slope uh, for that vertical glide slope, that is uh, LNAV plus V. We could see it here. Uh, in this case, we are just taking this as a true non-precision approach, descending down to our minimums. We see uh, the barrel minimums uh, of 480 and that's bugged right here as 480. And we would continue on our approach to the runway, uh, executing missed approach, uh, or uh, continuing our descent to landing as appropriate. So that's basically a non-precision approach, LNAV plus V. The Garmin uh, G500 will give you a, an electronic glide slope information presentation, so you can follow that down to the runway, uh, but you need to keep in mind that, uh, that it's not a true glide slope um, or c true vertical uh, CDI, so you need to take uh, take that into account.